Hello, I'm Father Joe Roche of the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. Thank you for joining us as we continue with our year-long journey reading the diary of St. Maria Faustina Kowalska from beginning to end. Today we have a letter from St. Faustina to Father Sopochko, dated from March of 1937. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, to Most Reverend and Dear Father, I am sending you my heartfelt wishes for a happy Easter. Alleluia. May the risen Christ endow you with his all-powerful love, because with it one can endure everything. Let your heart, dear Father, melt away completely in God's love, for all those who have shared in Jesus' suffering have a right to take part in Jesus' immense joys and glory. Thank you very much for your prayers and for the wishes for my name day. It gave me great pleasure to receive your letter, and I thanked the Lord Jesus most heartily for it. I would very much like to know how your health is, dear Father, as you write so little about yourself. I would also like to learn something more about all your activities, Father, as well as about your efforts undertaken in this whole work of God. Let me just say here that your heart should rejoice, dear Father, because great is the glory of God and the benefit for souls, thanks to this work. God himself has set up the throne of his mercy upon earth. I see future times as if present. During this time of the Feast of Mercy, I am completely immersed in the depths of God and unite myself intimately with the initiation of the worship of his mercy. And now, as regards my own health, I am already completely well. The doctor decided to keep me in the sanatorium throughout March, but on Holy Saturday, I am definitely going to going back to the convent. I am grateful to the Lord Jesus for this illness because it gave me an opportunity to complete what you ordered me to do, dear Father, that is to put both diaries in order and to underline what is not of me but of the Lord Jesus. I carried out everything as best I could, even though with a certain clumsiness. I have already filled these two notebooks and began the third one. If I had not been ill, I would not have had time to do this. The Lord Jesus knows what he is doing. We should simply know how to submit to his holy will in everything. And now as regards my leaving the congregation, I'm going to talk to Father Andres about this during Easter, as I have a feeling he will visit us to say Holy Mass, so he will have more time for a conversation with me. While praying before this image, I received two great graces for others. One concerned a certain dying person, and the other a certain Jewish lady who was baptized in the last hour of her life. As regards my own soul, I shall put it in one word. God lives in me, and I live in him. I kiss your hand, dear Father, and ask your blessing and prayers. Your spiritual daughter, Sister M. Faustina, Prandnik, 24th of March, 1937. St. Faustina replies to Father Sopochko's letter about a month and a half later at Easter time. She sends him God's love, knowing that he is suffering, as she has. She thanks him for the feast day greetings. In Poland, it is more common to celebrate one's feast day or name day rather than the birthday. She wants to know more details about his health. No doubt she is worried after reading his, li his letter. She'd also like to know what he is doing and how things are progressing. She is thankful that the Divine Mercy image is on display in Vilnius. She says that it is like Jesus' throne on earth from which he can pour out graces on the world. She has been granted the grace to see things in the future like the eventual proclamation of Mercy Sunday and her own canonization. Mercy Sunday falls on the octave of Easter, and every day of the octave is like Easter Sunday. So she immerses herself in that great paschal mystery. Uh, God's mercy, 
she rejoices that God's mercy uh, begins to be worshipped. Her health has improved. She says she is completely well. She stayed an extra month in the hospital, but she should be back in her convent on Holy Saturday. The time there allowed her to underline her diary as instructed. God gave her that time for a reason. Her diary is important, and she needed time to work on it. She hopes to speak to Father Andras at Easter about leaving her congregation. She has won graces for some people by praying before the image of the Divine Mercy. She rejoices that she lives in God and that God lives in her. Jesus says that we should do the same when he speaks about the vine and the branches. He says, abide in me and I will abide in you.